coding is a very visual thing and my challenge is to teach something so visual to someone with low vision. These physical tactile blocks are designed to replicate the exact features in the design software so that the students are able to understand how these code blocks are connected in the computer without having the need to see it. Hi everyone, I'm Clara and I lead a ground-up project called Code as one where I develop STEM coding and robotics curriculum for the disadvantaged communities. Right now, my projects are focused on developing curriculum for the visually impaired and we ran a pilot program last March holiday to deliver a coding program with assistive technologies as well as tactile materials using these 3D printed tactile blocks. So I'm also a volunteer at Soundball and Soundball is a tennis sport that's adapted for the visually impaired. This sport uses a different type of ball which is larger. It uses foam and it produces a sound when it bounces so that the visually impaired are able to tell where the ball is coming from. From my experience from Soundball, I noticed that the disability has actually restricted quite an amount of activities for the visually impaired to do. Um, so that was when I thought about the possibility of bringing coding classes to the visually impaired children. So I attended an uh, NLB event which is called uh, MIT Sunday, Make Inclusive Tech Sundays. It's a weekly meetup session for the public to learn more about assistive devices as well as co-creating customized assistive devices for the persons with disabilities. During the session, we were given an opportunity to see various prototypes that were co-created by the public, such as some of the um, 3D printed nail clippers for the persons with disabilities and I was inspired by the amount of low-cost effective solutions that were created by the public to improve the daily lives of the persons with disabilities. So before we can start using the 3D printers, we have to go through a three-hour session first. I felt the workshop was quite well paced for me. It was easy to pick up. The session was enough for me to understand how the machines and the software could work. And I was able to start working on my own project immediately. At the start, it could be a little bit scary to operate the machines on our own, but there will always be a maker coach in Make It to help us with any form of issues we have with the 3D printers. So what I enjoy the most about the Make It community is seeing all groups of people from all ages and background coming together to create all kinds of projects and they are all very passionate in what they do. In the Make It community, the maker coach Brian has introduced me to Uncle Stanley who was also a part of the Make It community. We were being introduced because of our mutual interest in coding related activities and this has sparked conversations between me and Uncle Stanley to create a software that could potentially be used for the future of our VI coding programs. I think the Make It community is a very interesting gathering ground for makers because it's where a lot of collaborations and interactions that can happen naturally. So I've printed about 200 over pieces so far and I need four sets of it. Each set is about 50 over pieces and I have spent over 50 hours to print but it doesn't include the amount of time that I've spent on digitally designing each of these code blocks because it involves the process of prototyping each code block to make sure it fits into places before I could mass print the whole set. There are also times whereby I broke one of the pieces when I was removing it from the mat after spending about 30 minutes to print it. But eventually I managed to complete everything within a span of three months. So I think 3D printing is actually quite suitable for this project because um, it's durable and it allows the children to repeatedly handle the pieces during the workshop. 
and I also find that it's a very low-cost solution for this project. These coding blocks works very well for the visually impaired children because of the physicality of it. The student can touch and feel how each of these code blocks connects together without having the need to look at what's in the computer screen. I will definitely have more projects with Make It in the future, um, but I'm not very sure what yet because I'm very focused on my current project. I might explore laser cutting machines because I've already gotten the certifications for that. I hope more people can come together and use Digital for Good and explore the possibility of using digital fabrication for inclusive tech solutions. I'm grateful that Make It believes in creating for good and without Make It, my project would not have been able to complete. So thank you Make It for making it happen for me.